Hi everybody, Dan Bailey here with another super awesome photography tip for you. In today's video, I'm going to give you a fundamental tip that I think you'll find extremely useful uh, no matter what kind of subjects you like to photograph or what kind of mirrorless camera you use, whether it's uh, Fujifilm, uh, Micro Four Thirds, Olympus, Panasonic, Sony, uh, any of the mirrorless cameras that are out there. If you don't shoot mirrorless cameras, uh, then take this as a lesson why you might want to consider it. There are some real distinct advantages to shooting mirrorless, which I'm going to show you. I often get questions from readers and workshop students about how I expose for my scenes. What exposure mode do I like to use? Do I bracket? And if so, how often and in what increments? Which metering pattern do I prefer? Center weighted, spot, or multi-segment? How do I handle challenging light? And what should my histogram look like? Do I expose for the left or to the right? Given that exposure is such a vital part of photography, these are all very good questions. So in this lesson, I figured I'd let you in on the exact methods that I use to expose for my scenes when I'm shooting with my Fujifilm mirrorless cameras. And again, this technique will apply no matter what kind of mirrorless camera you're using, whether it's Fujifilm or another brand. I'll start by saying that my exposure method looks a whole lot different than it used to, simply because digital photography offers huge benefits over film. In addition, mirrorless camera technology makes exposure even easier. Compared to color slide film, today's digital camera sensors offer way more latitude. We're talking maybe 10, 12 stops of useful information. By contrast, slide film had maybe five stops of usable information. So basically, if you, you either nailed your exposure or you threw the slide away, and that's just the way it was. And for the most part, anybody could nail a scene in really good light. But when the light got tricky, that's when things got tough. Your exposure chops were the most important skill you had as a photographer, and serious shooters were forever chasing the dragon of trying to be able to expose perfectly in every kind of conceivable lighting situation they encountered. Part of the reason that shooting slide film was so tricky is because in those days, when you looked through your camera, you couldn't see exactly what your exposure was going to look like. You looked through the lens, and what you saw was the scene itself, but what you saw in the viewfinder had absolutely no bearing on the adjustments that you had made to expose for the scene. So in a sense, you didn't know what it was going to look like until you got the picture back. And of course, this was oftentimes days, weeks, or even months later, depending on how long your shoot was. If you're shooting with a DSLR, you're faced with the same problem. What you see through the viewfinder is an exact view of the scene, but none of the exposure adjustments you make in the camera will be reflected in what you see. So again, you won't know what the picture is going to look like until you press the button and then go play the image back. And sure, the delay between when you shoot it and when you can press play and see the picture isn't that great, but what if you're shooting a very fast-breaking scene in tricky light? Waiting to see whether you nailed it or not might mean the difference between getting the shot and totally missing it. It's a whole new world with mirrorless cameras. With full-time live view and the electronic viewfinder and the LCD screen, you can see exactly what your picture is going to look like before you take it. And that's because what you see on the screen is a direct feed that's coming straight off the sensor. Even in the most challenging situations with the trickiest light you can imagine, what you see on the screen is exactly what the picture is going to look like. And that changes everything. So with that in mind, here's my basic workflow for getting proper exposure when I'm shooting with my mirrorless cameras. Step one, turn the camera on and set it to aperture priority mode. On my Fuji cameras, I've got a little A right on the shutter speed dial, and that's where I set it. Then I simply point it at the scene and look through the viewfinder, either the electronic viewfinder or the LCD screen. And if I like what I see, I press the button and take the picture. If what I see is a little too bright, then I simply grab the exposure compensation dial and dial it down a little bit until I like what I see. Or if it's too dark, I'll go the other way and brighten it up a little bit using the EV dial again. And if I, when I get to the point where I like what I see, I take the picture. Why? Because that's exactly what it's going to look like. It's that simple. It's like magic. There's no more big surprises. There's no more, oops, ooh, I didn't think it would look like that. Ooh, what happened there? Ooh, that's not what I was going for. There's no more blowing the shot because you overexposed when you should have underexposed, or vice versa, or because you didn't use the right metering pattern, or something like that. Now, most of the time, the camera is going to get it right, and you probably won't need to do any adjustments. But if what you're looking at the screen is different than whatever creative ideas you have for the scene, maybe you want a little brighter highlights or darker shadows, then you simply grab the EV dial or whatever exposure compensation control you have on your camera, make the necessary adjustments until you like what you see. And once again, when you like what you see, press the button. And as I said, this works for all mirrorless cameras, and it even works for different exposure modes like program and shutter speed as well. It's the same principle. 
In other words, the EV dial is your best friend when you're shooting with mirrorless cameras. And one thing to note, most DSLRs have a live view mode, and if you're in live view, all of this will be relevant, and they'll function just like mirrorless cameras with regards to exposure, with one huge difference. DSLRs in live view mode don't have the same full featured fast autofocus performance that they do when they're not in live view mode. And it's that way because of the technology required to make autofocus work in a live view situation or a through the lens situation. Where mirrorless cameras use a new kind of hybrid autofocus system that allows full-time fast autofocus mode even in live view. Here's an example. Last year I was flying Alaska Airlines and right at sunset I looked out my window and I saw this gorgeous light hitting the winglet. So I reached down, grabbed my camera and pointed it out the window. Now looking at that scene, it's pretty tricky light. And in a situation like that, what would be the best way to ensure proper exposure? Should I set a spot meter and point it right at the winglet or maybe at the brightest part of the sky? That's often what we used to do when shooting slide film. Now nah, that's too much work. In that case, the camera's meter was being a little bit fooled by the high contrast scene and it was making everything a little bit too bright. Because remember, the camera meter wants to reproduce everything as average tones. So if you have an overly dark scene or an overly bright scene, it's gonna brighten or darken stuff a little more than you probably want it to. So in this situation, the scene was a little bit too bright. So I simply grabbed the EV dial and went down to minus three. And that gave me the exact look I wanted. It preserved that beautiful golden light on the winglet and dropped all the rest of the sky and the rest of the scene a little bit dark. And so when I got to that point, that's what I liked in the viewfinder. I pressed the shutter and took the picture. And that's what you see here. And as soon as I landed it, I posted it on Twitter and tagged Alaska Airlines. And boy, were they happy. Here's another example. In this scene, once again, the camera meter told me that the right exposure, what it thought was going to be the right exposure, ended up being different than what I would like to see. It ended up being much brighter than I wanted. So I simply grabbed the EV dial and I turned it down a few clicks until I got what I wanted. I didn't have to select a different metering pattern or try metering on different parts of the scene. I just looked at the scene as a whole and dialed it up or down to my liking. Okay, what about manual exposure? Manual mode works pretty much the same way, only you have to set everything. You set the aperture, the shutter speed, and the ISO, and you watch what happens in the viewfinder. And as with the other modes, if you like what you see, you take the picture. If you don't, you simply make further adjustments with the shutter speed, the aperture, and possibly the ISO, until you get what you like. And finally, when you see what you like in the viewfinder, what do we do? We press the button. Now with some situations, you'll find that it's actually preferable to shoot in manual mode. And here's why. Let's say you're shooting an action scene where your subject's going in and out of the light. Now we know that in an automatic mode, the camera wants to reproduce that scene as an average tone. So when your subject's going in and out of the shadows, the camera is gonna adjust exposure accordingly. What if you wanna capture your subject against really dark black shadows? That's exactly what happened with this scene. I was photographing these cyclists coming out of the shade and I wanted to capture them right when they were in the sunlight against a nice shadowed background. However, I was tracking them with autofocus before they came out of the shade. And if I had used aperture priority, that would have opened up the whole scene and made the shade much too bright. And at the speed at which they were moving, by the time they came into the sunshine, the whole scene would have been overexposed. So to compensate for this, I dialed in the exact exposure I wanted, the exact look I wanted, in manual mode, and left it there. Of course, the riders were very much underexposed as they were coming through that shadowed section, but as soon as they hit the sunlight, they were lit by perfect exposure that I had set in manual mode. So to get this shot, I set a manual exposure and waited for them to come out to a certain point right in the sunshine, and then I pressed the button. Being a great photographer still requires a high degree of proficiency and experience with the camera. However, the basics of getting good exposure on your scenes when shooting with mirrorless cameras is surprisingly easy. Don't make it any more complicated than it needs to be. Look through the camera, and if you like what you see on the screen, press the button, take the picture. If what you see on the screen is too light or too dark, simply grab the exposure compensation dial, make an adjustment until you get what you like. It's really that easy, I promise you. It doesn't have to be hard. I know a lot of photographers out there who wanna make it harder than it is. And a lot of people would teach you in such a way that it seems like it's harder than it is. But it doesn't have to be, especially with mirrorless cameras. They're like magic. They make exposing for your scenes so much easier. I know I gave you a lot of information in this video, but it really does boil down to that one simple tip. If you like what you see on the screen, take the picture. If you don't, make an adjustment to your liking and go from there.
And I will say that there are times when it does make sense to use different metering patterns or exposure modes because there's a multitude of scenes and subject matter that you could be shooting. And a specific tool or method might work a little better in that situation. But for a general shooting exposure workflow, this is going to get you by in most situations. If you'd like even more photography insight from me, please check out my ebook, Making the Image. It's one of my most popular guides. It's a very visual reference that gives you lots of great tips for how to create more powerful photographs and make compelling compositions. Also, please subscribe to my channel and check out some of my other videos. You can find me on Patreon and social media at Dan Bailey Photo, and you can visit my website and blog as well. So thanks again for watching. Have fun with the cameras out there. Good luck with your exposure. I'll see you next time.